All righty. Well, so happy to be here. So excited about being in church. Sunday nights, like I say, is so special to me. I'm glad y'all are here. Grab your Bible, if you would, tonight. Turn over to the book of John. I'm going to be all, all the way over in chapter 6, and I'm sure you guys have probably heard many messages on this particular scripture. But uh, let me give you what the Lord kind of put on my heart with it, and uh, maybe he'll bless it tonight. So if you got your Bible, turn with me over to John chapter 6. I'm going to be all the way down in verse number 13 here. I mean, verse number 1, I'm going to go to verse number 13. In John chapter 6, verse number 1 says, After these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and the great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up... and. Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover feast, or the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one may every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew Simon's Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which have five barley loaf and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in the number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to his disciples and the disciples to them that were sat down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto this, his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with fragments of the five barley loaves, which remaineth over and above unto them that had eaten. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for letting me come tonight, Lord. Lord, I'm just so grateful that you give me an opportunity to speak, Lord. I'm glad that I can stand up. I just ask, Lord, tonight to let me just be your man for a little while, Lord, and give your people something that will help them grow spiritually, Lord. Lord, I just ask these things in your Son Jesus' most precious name. Amen. So tonight over in the book of John, it's an exciting chapter to me, and I've heard some messages on it that were wonderful. But when I went through and I started reading on this particular scripture, I saw a few things that, that kind of just stuck out to me, and tonight let me give them to you. So in verse number 2, we see a great multitude had followed Jesus. They had followed Jesus because one of the things that was important is Jesus was giving them free stuff, believe it or not. Jesus was healing them. Jesus was preaching to them as well. And Jesus at this particular point was going to feed them, and he truly did. Verse number 3, Jesus went up into a mountain, and he sat there with his disciples. Now, I don't know how important that is to you, but it kind of sets the pace of the next little bit of the conversation to me, how Jesus was alone with his twelve. That's an important fact to remember as we're looking at the scripture tonight. He was alone with just his hand-picked twelve, as truly he was. Now, when I think about him being on the mountain, it was a private moment between him and his twelve. And, of course, he's looking out across this multitude here. Now, the Bible gives us another important fact, too. The Lord saw fit to let us know right up front that it was the Passover time. The Passover time, the tradition of the Jews were drawing near. That's an important thing for us to note as well. It sets the time frame for us. And in verse number 5, see what it says. It says, When Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Peter, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? That part where it says he lifted up his eyes right there just does my heart, just makes my heart just do something when I think about Jesus lifting up his eyes and looking out along amongst those people, seeing those people there. 
You know, Jesus saw those people. They were there. They had come. I don't know if curiosity had brought them there. Maybe it was the fact that he was healing so many and some of them were just wanting to see that. But they were there. Jesus got the opportunity to speak and preach to them there. He truly did. But the thing that blesses my heart is Jesus saw them come, saw them there, and he saw them right where they were, if that makes any sense to you and I tonight. He saw them for who they were, right where they were. Amen. Right. Notice it, what it says there. Amen. Now, notice the question that Jesus had posed there. He's asking, Philip, he's saying, um, how are we supposed to feed these people? Now, Jesus in his heart knows exactly the plan. He understands. But it was a moment there was a teaching moment to his disciples. And a very important moment for you and I to see tonight, too, is the conversation that he had was really just between him and Philip. And, of course, we see that Andrew got involved in it, too. But the fact is, the question was posed to Philip. Now, I don't know how you think about it tonight, but when I look at it, I see that question Opposed to Philip, and I start trying to put myself in Philip's shoes, just how I would be. Now, I'm there with the Master. He's got us all together, his chosen 12, the ones that he picked, and he comes to me and he asks, well, well, well how, how are we going to feed these? And I would be at a point in my life there, where, I mean, a point in front of him, I would be thinking, you know, I've been part of the, the Lord's ministry. I've been doing his, his will. He's been asking me things. I've been with him. I've been seeing his miracles. But all of a sudden, he's asking me, how can we do it? And I'm thinking to myself, oh, it's got to be something that I'm going to have to, i got to figure this out. I'm, I'm kind of, what am I supposed to do? But notice his response. Philip's response is something that we all could take to, take to heart here. Look in verse number 12. I mean, look in verse number 7. Philip answered and said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that any, every one of them may take a little. I notice the tone of that. Every time I read it, I see that it's, it's a desperate response from Philip there. It truly looks like a desperate response. In verse number 9, it says, One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here with five barley loaves and two small fishes. Here comes something a little unknown. Now, I've thought about this many times before, and I've heard messages on it. Now, how this little boy knew the Lord needed five barley loaves and two fishes, I have no idea. One of these days I'll ask the Lord how that little boy knew. Maybe I'll meet that little boy or a grown-up man, whatever he is today, when we get into heaven. And I'll have to ask him, how did you know the Lord needed those barley loaves and your fishes? I don't know how that played out, but I, I'm going to ask him one of these days. But the fact is, the little boy knew the Lord needed this stuff. Sure enough, he needed it. Amen. Now, I'm assuming this little boy comes with his lunch. Now, nowhere in our Bible does it say where they went around asking the multitude. Anybody got anything? What did you bring? They didn't do that at all. But the little boy somehow miraculously knew in his heart the Lord needed that lunch. Sure did. Verse number 10. Look here. It says, And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now, here's another important fact, too, that we don't think about when you read this scripture. Jesus let them sit down, but what is the very next verse there? It says, now there was much grass in the place. Now, when I thought about that grass, I remember playing in the grass as a little boy. Now, I'm assuming they didn't have any fire ants in that grass that they were sitting in. But when I think of the grass, I think of how comfortable that could have been. It may have been grass that had been grazed on by sheep, and it was probably kind of kind of kept looking because sheep, you know, they mow down everything, but the grass was there. I'm sure it was soft and comfortable. You know, I think about it, I think about it being the lazy boy of the time. You know, they were sitting there on a lazy boy of grass, and they were fixing to get fed by the Lord. Amen. Amen. Verse number 11 tells us, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, his he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were sat down. So here comes the blessing. Now, up to this point, we don't see anybody really realizing what's going on. Now, I don't know how the multitude felt, felt about it, but all they were probably seeing is how this stuff was being distributed to them. It doesn't say there were baskets there or bags there or whatever, but it was distributed to them in a fashion that whatever was given just kept on giving until everybody was filled. Yep, Jesus took the offering from the little boy. He gave thanks for it. He broke it and distributed it. 
Yeah. That tiny little gift from that little boy sure did go a long way. Notice what it says in verse 12. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Now, I read that verse probably a hundred times. And when I see that part where it says, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. I thought thinking about that. And then in verse 13, it talks about, it says, Therefore they gathered them to the, together and, and, then, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remaineth over and above them that had eaten. I thought about that. Why twelve? Why eleven? Why ten? Why, why thirteen baskets? But they literally filled twelve baskets. And I thought about, what is that saying to me? And then I look up in verse 12 and it says, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. I think the Lord is trying to tell us something there about His twelve tribes. He's telling us that He's going to gather up the remainder of that, that nothing be lost. At some point, the Lord's coming back for all of them. Truly will. He's going to gather up those fragments that remain. Amen. He really will. Look with me there. Therefore, they gathered up the fragments. There was 12 of them. I can't imagine the eyes of the disciples. Now, at this point, the multitude's getting fed, and I'm sure they really didn't realize how all that played out, but Philip sure did. Andrew understood it. Philip knew exactly what happened. I bet Philip really got his eyes open in a, in a fashion where he thought it was going to be on him to, help, to go help figure out what to do. And you know, the Lord Jesus had it all under control. Amen. So tonight I'm going to give you just a few building blocks. Hopefully these things will help you kind of grow spiritually tonight. Um, I, that was my introduction there, so here goes the rest of it. The number one is people have a need for Jesus. I don't know if we look at this scripture and consider this whole scripture as a whole, but you can see where these people were after the Lord Jesus Christ. They were coming to Him to find out a few things. Like I said, they were looking for healing. A lot of them were sick. They were diseased. They were lost. They were pitiful. They were poor. And yet they were there in the Lord's midst looking for something from Him. Amen. It's just like it is today. We need Jesus. Amen. These people out here in this world that are lost, they need Jesus. Amen. They really do. They are in a peril without the Lord. Can you imagine the, the hell that is prepared for Satan that these poor people will end up in if they don't have Jesus in their heart? They truly will end up there. They sure will. But those that were genuinely seeking him, they were some that were sought of the sick and a lot of them were desperate. So each point tonight has got a question to go with it. First question is, do you realize how much others need Jesus? Amen. Number two is, Jesus shows his love and his miracles on a personal level. Now I thought about that. Like I said, I don't see anywhere in my scripture where it was announced publicly here in front of the multitude what Jesus had just done. The twelve disciples got the brunt of the miracle. They saw it take place. I'm telling you what, Philip's seen it. He was desperate to find out how he's going to do this, and yet the Lord delivered in such a way. To me, that was such a private moment between Philip, Andrew, and a few other disciples that were there pocketed around the Lord. They saw what was going on. Amen. Jesus shows his love and miracles on a personal level. Right. Yep, amen goes there. Here's your question. Is Jesus personal to you? Now, we all want miracles for sure, right? But sometimes we need to draw nigh to the Lord to see miracles. And it's the funny thing about it. It's the ones that really are drawing nigh to the Lord, the ones that are in their Bible, the ones that are praying the most. I've noticed they're the ones that see the miracles. I think sometimes we just get a little, little uh, null and void when we think about things, and we don't see the miracles because we're not looking for them. But usually they're there, truly are. Number three, now this was an important thing when I saw in here is how it was mentioned that the Passover was just about there. It was drawing nigh. I don't know if the Passover was the next day or whatever, but I thought, well, why did the Lord want to tell us that the Passover was so close when he was having this pinned down by inspiration of God through John? And I thought about that. Well, I think the Lord was telling us something about that blood. 
about His precious blood. How He mentioned that Passover and it was going to be something that had to be done. It really was His blood. When I think about the Passover feast and I think about that precious blood of the Lord, you know, we have nothing, absolutely nothing without that precious blood. You and I will just be same sick old dirty sinners without that precious blood to wash us clean in front of the Father. Amen. Here's your question. Tonight, do you have that blood applied to your heart? Has that blood covered your sins tonight? I sure hope so. Number four tonight, the need of personal prayer. Now, this is kind of a funny one here, but when I think of Philip's response, I saw it as a prayer. Philip's response was a desperate response. If we keep reading it over and over, you'll see the tone in it. Verse 7 says, Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. That's desperate. That truly was. You know, there's times in our lives where we're desperate for things too. Man, Philip was right here in front of the Lord. He had the Lord right in front of him and he didn't really understand or see a way for this to happen. Oh, but Jesus did. Oh, but Jesus did. Jesus knew exactly what it was and he was letting Philip work it out in his, in his mind and then he showed Philip the, 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 what his plan was, truly was. Amen goes there. That personal prayer. You know, it's kind of one of these things where you and I spend more time in our prayer closet, the better our lives will be. It truly will. It'll help us grow spiritually. I think a lot of times you and I, the more we take needs of others to the Lord, the more time we get to spend with God. That's important to us. That helps us grow spiritually. Amen. So your question for that one tonight is, do you have enough personal prayer time with the Lord? Number five. We can find rest and comfort in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember God's telling us there was grass in the land. I don't know what it is, but that grass just makes me think how comfortable it had to have been when there, when he said, I'll just sit them down in the grass. I'm fixing to feed them. Amen. Amen. We can find comfort in Jesus Christ. Remember, if he make us lie down in green pastures. He's such a God that's blessed us that much that He wants us to be comfortable as well. When I thought about Him and Him wanting us to be comfortable, I thought about how Adam and Eve had sinned in the garden and they were so embarrassed and naked and they realized they were sinners and they were sinners. They, the ones that kicked off the sin in this world and corrupted it. But God felt sorry for them in that He killed an animal, shed the blood, and made them clothes. And I say, what do you think about that being comfortable? But, you know, they were covering themselves with fig leaves before the Lord made them something to wear. He didn't want them to be uncomfortable. I don't know if you've ever touched a fig leaf, but everyone I've ever touched is big, gross, and sticky. Some of them even have little hairs on them and little spines. I mean, it's almost like cutting okra or something. I mean, they're just, they're not comfortable, amen. But the Lord did make sure that Adam and Eve were comfortable, even after they messed up. And they really deserved a lot of punishment. They truly did. The Lord made them comfortable, just like He did this multitude here. We can find comfort and rest in the Lord. Do you have that rest and comfort in Jesus? Amen. Number six tonight, I love this one here. You know, Jesus can satisfy our every need. He really and truly can satisfy our every need. He can feed the hungry just like he fed the 5,000 here. You know, we live in a world where people are going hungry. We truly do. America has this problem where there's a lot of people that are truly going hungry. But America has a problem where we're spiritually malnutrition. People aren't taking in the Word of God the way they should. I see a lot of churches that I honestly feel, I'm not being judgmental or throwing rocks, but I honestly feel like there's a lot of churches out there that are truly, spiritually malnutrition. Well, Jesus can feel that nourishment. He truly can. Not only physically, but spiritually, He truly will do it. Amen. So tonight, I'll ask you the same question as we go through. Are you spiritually malnutrition tonight? Now, if you're truly having struggles in your Bible and stuff, don't be spiritually malnutrition. Stay after it. Church is an important place to get spiritually fed. That's where we ought to be on Sunday night. I'm glad you're here. Amen. Thanks for being here. Number seven tonight. 
This has been preached many times. But think about this. God really can use the smallest things. You and I would have looked at this three fishes or two fishes and, and these seven barley. We would have been like, well, just like Philip. That ain't going to happen, Lord. I'm just going to... I'm just going to be a negative Nelly. It ain't going to happen. But you know what? The Lord took that little bit that little boy had brought forth that had given, and he multiplied it and fed 5,000 with it and had enough left over in 12 baskets. It's amazing how the Lord can use little things. But the question is, what do you offer to the Lord? You know, a lot of times people think they got to have come up with some big idea for God. Or they got to have some big idea of their own to bring forth the church. But it's really the little things that the Lord really uses. It ain't the big things. A lot of times the big things come with big shots. And Lord, the Lord's not going to use a big shot. He likes the little squirts, if that makes any sense to you tonight. He don't like the big shots. He likes the little, the little things. That's what God's into. He truly isn't. That's why I love that song, Little as Much When God is in It. But you know what? A lot of times when that little comes out, sometimes it's everything someone ever had. You and I might not look like much, but it might be all they had. Those little things are important to God. Truly is. What can you offer the Lord? What little do you have that can be used in a huge way for God? What can you do for God with five barley loaves and three small fishes? Are you willing to give him what you have? Amen. Little is much when God is in it. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for letting us come tonight, Lord. We're so grateful to be in your house, Lord. Thank you for your holy word. Thank you for feeding those multitude of 5,000 on that wonderful green grass, Lord. So grateful that you made them comfortable, Lord. Thank you for this scripture. Lord, I ask you to let it help this people tonight, to let them grow spiritually, Lord. Lord, you fill in the blanks if I missed anything, Lord, if there's anything else to be said. You say it in their heart through the Holy Spirit. The Lord, these things I ask in your Son, Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Five hundred twenty. Five hundred twenty. Thank you, Brother Walker. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can learn a lot. How many of you are going to meditate on that scripture a little bit? How many of you meditated on it tonight? John chapter 6. That's exactly right. And who knows who the bread of life is? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Amen? Amen. All right. 520, let's stand together. for Jesus who died upon the cruel tree to think of his great sacrifice at Calvary I know my Lord expects the best from me how many are the lost that I have lifted are so many the hours I spent for Christ so few because of all my lack of love for Jesus I wonder if his heart is breaking too how many are the lost that I have lifted how many are the chained to free I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me I wonder have I cared enough for others or have 
I let them die alone. I might have helped a wanderer to the Savior. The seed of precious life I might have sown. How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me. No longer will I say within the valley I'll climb to mountain heights above. The world is dying now for want of someone to tell them of the Savior's matchless love. How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? for Jesus when he has done so much for me. Is that a searching question? How I many of you think that question really goes deep? That's a deep question. All right, let's uh, close in a word of prayer. Brother Harold, you close us, please, sir. Amen. Yeah.